I V M. Hello, one. Hello, all. Welcome to the diary of the traveling professor. And I'm Sadhat Deshmukh, your friendly neighborhood traveling professor himself, talking from London, post Halloween London, London, which is soon going to go into a lockdown. It is so strange how human beings are reacting to, uh, you know, lock the lockdown. I saw a massive political debate, and uh, the Prime Minister Boris Johnson over here announcing the lockdown and the way in which it will be uh, done in the in the most humane fashion and and the rest of it. But what I realized was that we are always trying to create some meaning out of this stupid COVID nineteen virus that is impacting all of us. Whereas the virus doesn't really give a rat's ass about it. Trust me, in our mind, don't we actually think that 2021 is going to become a better year? Huh? A better year? On what basis? Right? Does Jan 1, 2021 mean something to the virus? No. But human beings feel that, aha, some, you know, strange vaccine will come or something new will happen. Maybe the Trump administration. Okay, but what's that got to do with the virus? And how is the virus actually propagating? And does a lockdown really help? Or will a month's lockdown help? Well, I think, you know what I think? I think all of us are clumsy apes trying to do the best we can. The last pandemic we had was maybe 120 years ago. And we are kind of struggling to understand what to do with this one because we are trying to attach unnecessary meaning to what is a simple virus attack on humanity. Right. Virus rant out of the way because clearly I'm going to be impacted by the London lockdown as well. And uh, well, obviously the rant will follow, won't it? Won't it? It's going to happen from this Thursday and I'm reaching out to you on the Tuesday. So just a couple of days of freedom, folks. And then I'm sure the pubs and bars and cafes will all close down for good reason, I think, for good reason. But this set me thinking, and it set me thinking in a very strange direction. I was wondering whether our biological hardwired behavioral patterns actually can be exploited by marketing better. Now, this is a strange one, this is, because I actually feel that uh, if anybody has to really go a, do a deep dive into this, somebody should see uh, a man called Robert Sapolsky's Stanford series lectures on behavioral biology. Now, that's a mouthful, but uh, Sapolsky has been studying uh, baboons. Yes, you you heard that right, baboons for over 20 years. And he has kind of understood how primates behave and how human beings behave and how the essential urges that a, uh, you know, um, a primate has are very close to how a human being has. A human being only has a much better, well-developed prefrontal cortex that allows him to shape his or her environment a little deeper. So then, as a marketer, what are the deep biological urges that will actually make a difference to your marketing communication? So that's the sort of thinking that I went into and I then came across another marketing guru, a guy called Professor Gad Sad. Yes, that's a name, Gad Sad. He's a very, very interesting guy because he studies biology as well. He studies psychology and biology, but uses it for applications in marketing. And very interestingly, he talked of three or four biological sort of patterns or urges that every human being has that could be tapped into by marketers. The most interesting that I found was, you know, why do men, a majority of men buy Maseratis? And this kind of made me feel really interested in this. Like, why doesn't a woman who's rich enough to buy a Maserati I'm sure there's the odd exception, but apparently more than 95 to 98% of people all across the world uh, are men who buy the Maseratis. And Professor Gadsad and uh, uh, Professor Robert Sapolsky gave me the answer. And that answer is strangely in a biological urge, which is related to the mating ritual. Now, the mating ritual is very strange because it results in something called peacocking. 
Yeah, that's a word peacocking is. And peacocking is something that the peacock does to impress or woo a reluctant peahen uh, to mate with, uh, mate with him and propagate the species. Now, peacocking is a very interesting thing because the peacock has a very, very beautiful but very, very heavy tail that he uses to seduce the, the peahen. But it is an incredible impediment if the peacock actually has to survive a predatorial attack. So it is as if the peacock is showcasing the fact that he is macho enough to actually take on predators because of the overcompensation that he is doing with his tail. No, seriously, I'm serious about this. Guys, do check Robert Sapolsky and Gad Sad out. Don't kill me for this. This is not pseudoscience. This is the real stuff. And this is something that I found really important and impressive because Professor Sad actually connected it to men buying the Maseratis and essentially calling it something which is very, very akin to, you know, peacocking. A man who has a certain amount of money and power will buy a Maserati, apparently, whenever he does, to showcase the mating impulse and propagate the species. Now, this sounds crazier and crazier. And I actually spoke about this to a few people that I am actually teaching and coaching and promptly came a question back to me saying, hey, but what about women and their Louis Vuitton bags? Are they also peacocking? Are they also following the mating ritual? And not really, you know, is the answer. Not really, because actually whenever a woman is showing off her Louis Vuitton bag, the biological urge is not about procreation or mating. It is completely different. We'll get into what and how it is different, but it does not reflect the fact that a woman is showcasing her really expensive handbag to attract a suitable male. In fact, she's communicating to society at large and she's communicating to, you know, other women, people of the same sex. Now, this sort of stuff makes me feel a little uncomfortable, a little uncomfortable to tell you the truth, because I always think that, okay, if it's really all biological, then what are we talking about? And am I unwittingly, am I unwittingly, uh, you know, creating a situation wherein I'm propagating the sexism and, the, you know, the chauvinism that is associated with all of these uh, observations? So therefore, Dear listener, I must say, I am not propagating either anti-feminism or sexism or any kind of racism based upon these biological observations. All that I'm saying is that it becomes incredibly interesting to note that there are certain behavioral impulses that are so hardwired in us, peacocking being one of them, that any astute and intelligent marketer can literally use for his or her benefit. Basis, the brand that he or she has to hawk. Of course, you can't sell life insurance on this one. But I hope that you find it interesting and not offensive because I think it's high time that we get off our high horses and stop being offended at each and everything which is actually a biological impulse and see the underlying pattern and actually see if we can use it or not in obviously an ethical way. On that interesting note and insight, what I wanted to do was maybe urge you to write back to me or, uh, you know, speak back to me in some fashion or the other and tell me if you have seen this whole peacocking ritual uh, being used by uh, any brand effectively other than the Maserati. Well, if you like this diary entry of mine, many more to come from where this came from. Do follow me on Instagram where I'm uh, posting the occasional story and the occasional IGTV. They're fun types. And on LinkedIn, I'm making some serious posts to complement podcasts like these. I hope you liked the effort at actually talking about a subject which can be taboo. I'm trying to do justice to it as much as I can. And I'll try to continue it. Uh, over a period of the next few podcasts that I'm to make these diary entries of mine, right? And if you like these, go to ivmpodcast.com, just download the app or, you know, go to wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Until next time then, until the Thursday. See you soon. 
I hope you enjoyed that show. If you aren't following us on social media, please do. We're IVM Podcasts on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I want to let you all know about two new shows that we've launched this week. The first one is Millennial Athlete, hosted by Tanvi and Shlok. Both of them are, you know, they spent their life playing badminton, and they know a lot of athletes, and they want to talk about the particular challenges that athletes face. Really, really great conversations. Do definitely check that out. The other show that I wanted to mention to you that we launched this week is Non Curry. Non Curry is a show about the, it's about food and the history of food and the economics around food and its consumption and all that kind of stuff. It's a really, really interesting conversation. It's hosted by Sadaf, the an author chef and former Master Chef India finalist, and Archit, who is a researcher who writes on behavioral science and economics. Definitely, definitely worth checking out. Besides that, we had a great week as always, right? You know, great stuff on all the normal shows. Do check those out. But with that, hope to see you again next week. How many times have you motivated yourself to improve your sleep or lose weight or be more productive? How many times have you failed? Hi, my name is Ashton Doctor. Tune into my show, The Habit Coach Podcast, where we focus on creating small, tiny habits to improve your life instead of those big, impossible tasks. So make listening to me a habit every Monday, Wednesday and Friday on the IVM Podcast app or ivmpodcast.com or on your favorite podcasting app.